In the past, many privately held businesses were, you know, what I'll call lifestyle businesses. They provided meaningful cash flow. They provided uh, a good living for an individual or for a family, but they weren't really operated with an eye towards creating terminal value, uh, exit value for the business when you go sell it down the road. Today, I think uh, entrepreneurs are much more focused on not only building that business, but selling it at the end of the day and creating value for themselves. And so the focus on terminal value is, is much more the mindset that we have as a private equity owner or as an institutional investor. And today we're seeing more and more entrepreneurs as the private equity model is becoming uh, much more well known and understood. And I think many people are more comfortable with it. There are individuals that want to replicate that. It is difficult to do for an entrepreneur, but I think that that mindset has created a change or a difference, maybe in the way that they not only own, but will operate and eventually uh, sell or monetize their asset. You know, one thing that I think is, is important for, in particular for entrepreneurs to remember is that it's very difficult to time the market, right? So many individuals that own a business today, it's successful. They have, they believe a, 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 a a good runway in front of them to continue to grow their businesses. It's an important lesson learned, particularly from the institutional marketplace, to not necessarily try and time the market and sell all the way at the top, because it's nobody, you know, none of us have a crystal ball in front of us here. So, you know, we think it's important to leave growth on the table for the next buyer. That's the way that we think about exiting our businesses. And I think it's a good lesson for entrepreneurs as well. I think one of the differences between uh, an institutional investor or a private equity firm like ourselves and an entrepreneur is that we're, we're less emotional about the business. So we're, we're here, our profession is to create value for our investors and not necessarily grow an individual asset. Unlike an entrepreneur where in, in many cases or most cases, that's his or her life, uh, livelihood. That's the business that they grew. It might, it might be part of their or have been part of their family for multiple generations. So they view these opportunities and these businesses differently. We're a little dispassionate in some of these situations and can uh, exit a business in a, more, uh, in a, in a uh, more readily than maybe an entrepreneur would. Well, I think one of the differences in, in the capital markets today or this improvement in, in the economic environment versus prior periods is that uh, number one, there's a fair bit of pent-up demand given the prolonged uh, downturn that we faced and, and the difficult economic environment. And then in addition to that, there's uh, improvement really across the board. So you've got not only a low interest rate environment, the public capital markets are, are doing exceedingly well. The European market has continued to improve. Uh, I, I, so I think that you know when you have that sort of synchronicity across lots of elements, it it uh, creates a little bit of a different environment that that at the end of the day has a little bit more strength associated with it. The the one area that is still yet to be seen is can some of the recovery in the fundamental end markets be sustained? Because you've had certain end markets have had strength, but others. Uh, there's still ambivalence, particularly in, in certain areas of the industrial sector.